Hey there, thanks for joining me today. My name is Suzanne, and over the last 10 plus years, I've been working with and continue to work with many educators who teach investing skills and strategies. And I've met all sorts of personalities in that time, and what I've learned is how to pull some nuggets of wisdom and get to the core of what they teach. Today, I'm going to be asking AJ Brown, the president and founder of Trading Trainer, a juicy question, and let's see if I can get some great advice advice for our viewers. Hi, AJ. Welcome. Hi. Thanks, Suzanne. Glad to be back. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for coming on. Well, before we get into um, the question I'm going to ask you, I just wanted to say you have some awesome initiatives going on at Trading Trainer. And one that I found extremely valuable is your collection of white papers where you cover everything from scenario testing to diagonal spreads. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about those papers and how they can get their hands on them? Absolutely. And everybody should get their hands on them. They're very valuable and they are in the public domain, which means anybody has free access to them. We have them hosted on our website. So I'm going to share my screen here. And as you can see, I am in a browser and I've just visited the website tradingtrainer.com. That's our main site, Trading trainer.com t-r-a-d-i-n-g t-r-a-i-n-e-r dot com and as you can see when you visit this site <clears throat> there's a big carousel set of images that goes by and the one here it's got a big label on it that says white papers there's a button that says download the white papers now you just click on that and you'll go ahead and, as it loads, get instructions on how to get free access to our web portal, which you should do as well, because not only can you get access to the white papers, but we have all other sorts of bonuses like real-time streaming of index values and things like that that you can get with your free account. So just click that button about grabbing the white paper, log into the web portal, get yourself those white papers, really worth your time. Wonderful. I'm glad you make those available. So now let's get into uh, the question and I'm going to pick your brain a little bit. Um, in the community, I, I've heard that there's a lot of confusion with what what it means to buy versus sell an option. And being the options mm. expert you are, can you explain the difference? Yeah. Um, and that buying and selling gets kind of confusing because an option contract itself is an, an agreement between folks about buying and selling an underlying symbol. Now, most of the times that doesn't happen, right? Most of the time the option contract itself becomes an investment vehicle. But when you think about it, let's actually bring over first, let's talk about the definition of buying and selling, right? Uh, in the trading world, we say going long. And that means when we open a position, we're buying. And then to close the position, we're selling. And the idea, of course, is that when we buy, we buy it at a lower price. And then when we sell, we sell it at a higher price and we keep the difference. And then, of course, there's the less known directional strategy for underlying symbols called shorting. And this is where you sell. You sell to open the position and then you buy it back to close. It's called buy to close. And so the idea here is when you sell something to open a position, you want to sell it at a higher price and you want to buy it back at a lower price. And there's always these, um, the, the one thing that always is true is that when we buy, we want to buy it low. And when we sell, we want to sell it high. Now, if we change the order and sell first, we still want to sell high and then buy it back low. And that gives us that, that difference. Now, when you add in what options are, and I'm going to share my screen again. And I brought up Investopedia, which is an online kind of definition glossary for different um, terms. You'll see here the definition of stock option, right? Uh, a stock option gives an investor the right, but not the obligation to buy or sell a stock, or now it can also be an ETF or even index, at an agreed upon price and date. And there's two types, puts and calls. Um, so let's talk about that a second, because uh, 
This is coming from the perspective of the buyer. The buyer of an option is getting that right, that right to exercise that option any time between now and its expiration date. And we're talking about the American type options here where you can exercise it now. And so when that buyer of a call option, for instance, exercises their right, they can buy whoever sold them the option, buy their stock at that strike price. And so they have the right to buy the seller of the options stock at that strike price at any time between now and the expiration date. And so that's all well and good. They have to pay for that right in the form of option premium. So the seller gets a little bit of a fee to be on the obligation end of this contract. And the buyer of the option, you know, if they're going to be exercising the option, they'll of course want um, you know, the underlying symbol to go up in price because if they have this agreement with somebody to buy the option, buy the underlying symbol at a certain strike price, if it goes up in price, they can still get that lower price to buy. And remember, we like to buy low and sell high and then sell it back at the retail price, which would be higher. But now let's talk about the seller of that call option. The seller has an obligation, right? They collected some money up front and they have an obligation to that buyer of their option. The obligation is, is that they must sell their underlying symbol at that strike price if the buyer comes a knocking. So the seller basically has locked in a sell price for the underlying symbol and in return collected a premium. Now the seller is gonna be happy if the underlying symbol stays low because they collected that premium and more than likely the buyer will not want to you know cash in that option because they can go and buy the stock at a cheaper price now let's also talk about puts because that adds another um, intricacy to it right the put option if you're a buyer of a put option you are basically buying an agreement that the person you bought that option from will buy your stock index ETF, your underlying symbol, at the strike price. In other words, you will put to them your underlying symbol if you exercise the option. You have the right to exercise that. You're going to pay for that right. There's a little premium you pay, but then you can sell your stock to them at that price. Now, in that case, remember we like to sell high. We hope that the underlying symbol drops in price because then we'll buy it at the low price, exercise this option and force the person who sold us this option to take our stock from us at a higher price. We put it to them. But now again, what about the seller of that put option? The seller of that put option is under obligation. They collect a little money up front from the buyer called the premium. And the seller now has an obligation, if the buyer comes a knocking, to buy the buyer's underlying symbol at the strike price. So, of course, the seller hopes that the underlying symbol, you know, that it, it stays low, right? Or I should say it stays high. They want that to stay high because why would you want to sell something when you at, at the price we've obligated to when you can sell it higher at the retail? So now comes the question of buying and selling options, which was the original question. I know I'm dragging on here, but you've got to get those definitions straight. And sometimes if you're a visual learner, you might have to take some notes and show some arrow, arrows. But what it comes down to is when it comes to call options, the buyer is locking in a buy price, 
the seller is locking in a sell price, the seller is obligated, the buyer has the right, right? The buyer has control and in return, the seller gets a premium. In the case of the put option, the buyer is locking in a sell price, a sell to the seller, and the seller of the option is locking in a buy price of the underlying symbol. The seller, again, has the obligation. The buyer has the right. The seller with the obligation gets a little bit of premium for taking on that obligation until the expiration date. So a lot of times, if you're in it to collect those premiums, you might construct these type of trades where you sell, make the little premium, and then hope it expires worthless. Because one thing that's for sure, no matter what the underlying symbol does, time will pass by and that option will expire. So a lot of times people get into the, the, the business of selling options in order to collect that premium and then they construct the trade such that it's unlikely the buyer will want to exercise the option. So that's why we might sell it because the seller always has time on their side, right? The buyer does not. The buyer has to deal with the fact that the option is a wasting asset. The seller doesn't. The seller likes that. So time is on the seller side. And that's why a lot of times when the market is choppy or sideways channeling, the seller is going to take the lead. So that's the not so short but very detailed answer about buying and selling and stock options and how they play out. Thank you, AJ. I really appreciate that detailed explanation. I was here feverishly taking some notes, yeah. so I didn't chime in too much, but that was that was great. Um, good. A lot of details, and I, I hope our listeners got some great information from that. I know I did. This might, well, be, um, this but, might be one of those yeah. ones, Suzanne, where they have to circle back and listen to it a couple of times. Perhaps I could see that. Yeah. <laughs> and mm. that's what's nice about this. We're recording it so they can go back and, and watch it a few times if they need to. Um, well, thank you so much for spending uh, the time today and going through that with us. Uh, before we jump off this uh, call, let's just have you bring up Trading Trainer one more time and um, make sure that they know how to get those white papers. Absolutely. The easiest way is just visit our tradingtrainer.com secure website. That's at T-R-A-D-I-N-G-T-R-A-I-N-E-R.com. Uh, and right here, right on the home page, there's these images passing by. Grab the weekly articles, the Ask AJ. One of these images passing by always has on it the grab the white papers, download the white papers now. So just click on that big green button and there'll be clear instructions on how to get yourself a free account to our web portal where the white papers are contained. And we're always packing that web portal with all sorts of bonuses for our complimentary access users. So please become one of those complimentary access users. Get your free account now. And Suzanne, thank you again for having me on for one of these calls. Wonderful. Thanks, AJ, for being here. And thank you to our listeners for tuning in again. Uh, just before we wrap up, the next time we talk with AJ, I'll be asking him, how can you profit from an option? Is it just as simple as leveraging a stock or are there other ways to profit? So we'll get into that. Great.